Welcome back guys, it's Jackson here and I just shot this video and I was about six minutes in when I realized that I was recording my face the entire time and not the actual <laughs> screen on my computer so I'm a little bit salty but hey we'll we'll manage. Um, last video I made was like a month ago I think and I was working on a game called Bleep 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 which I've since abandoned and I've quit it because it was getting too complicated for me and all the games that I've been working on lately have just been too complicated for me so I figured what would be good for me is to just take a step back from that, take a step back from everything that I've been working on and I've started a new project which is going to be reusing some of the old systems and things that um, I've been working with but I've stripped out a bunch of shit and I'm just gonna like my what's the word the modus operandi I don't even know if that's like the right use of this word but my top priority with this project is to just keep it clean keep it simple and that's all <laughs> and to just have fun with it because I just I tend to get I tend to make them so freaking complicated so anyway this is this is the engine um, let me just make sure that I'm actually recording this time it looks like I am uh, this is what we got so far, so I'm just going to show you. It's going to be a multiplayer wave game. So you can see we got the countdown up there. A little dude over here just spawned in, so I'm just going to go and fuck him up real quick. Die. Um, okay, and let me just check that the sounds are working. I think the sounds are working. Hopefully the sounds are working. So now in this one we've got some different enemies, because it's obviously the second wave, so I'm just going to shoot them up real quick. Alright, and you can see it's counting down again. Um, and this time, oh fucking Jesus. <laughs> uh, we have these guys, and if you shoot at them, the projectiles get caught in that electric cloud and they recover. So you gotta come in here and smack them up with your sword a little bit. Do you think I can beat him? Let's see if I can beat him. Damn, I am so good. <laughs> and if you hit these, if I can, they launch you up in the air and then you go off the edge and then you die. And when you die, we have a spectator mode. Um, I think which waits for a few seconds to see if everybody else is also dead. Is this still recording properly? Yeah, it looks like my face just froze for a second. Um, and then it's taken me back to the tutorial. If everybody else was still in the game, because it's going to be a multiplayer game, um, it'd continue the wave and if at least one person was alive when the wave ends, everybody comes back. So this is the tutorial, and what I'm going to do right now real quick is the ultimate speed run, better than anybody's ever seen. Ready to watch this. Oh, fuck I'm good. I don't think there's anybody in the world as good as me at this game. <laughs> Which is understandable, because I made the fucking thing, and I'm one of like the five people to play it. Oh shit. Yo. <laughs> that was an alright speedrun. Okay, so that's the game. That's the game. Now, oh, I think there was something else I was going to talk about. So it's going to be a wave based game. I want to have single player modes, I'm going to have multiplayer modes as well. So in the multiplayer ones, it'll have different waves and you've got to cooperate with your homies to take down the enemies. I thought that would be pretty cool. Let me show you some of the code. Because in the last couple of development logs I did, I didn't, I didn't really show much of the code, so I thought that might be interesting to do today. So, let me go through the game mode. I'm just going to run through and show you how everything works. So this runs on the server. Um, like I said, it's a multiplayer game, but if you don't know too much about multiplayer, don't worry. I've just got some bullshit to just... <laughs> keep track of who is logged into the game. So I might show you all of this in case you were interested and you wanted to sort of learn by looking at how I've set it up. I'm not going to explain everything, but I thought it would be cool to show you. Um, so this is just keeping track of all the players. Pretty much. And game over happens when all the players are defeated and respawn happens at the end of the wave if there's a player still left in the game. And now here's the wave spawning logic. So I've got some setup 
which is getting the wave information from a data table. So let me show you how that looks. Because how I want to do this is I want to have different levels with different combinations of enemies in the waves. I thought it would be cool to have different sorts of maps and they can have their different own native enemies and it would be really easy for me to be able to change what would spawn on which map if I set it all up in a data table. So this is how the data table looks for that one that I just showed you. Uh, wave zero. Uh, let me let me just collapse all of this straight up. So if I collapse that just there. Basic wave game is the row name and basic wave game is oops is just the enemies that I want to spawn on this map. I just needed to give it a name. And now inside of that these are all the waves information. So in wave zero there's nothing. In wave one I have a list of enemy classes and the number of each of those classes. So the class of the first enemy is called MWA Lucy BP, and there's one of them. In wave two, we have MWA Lucy, zero of them, because I didn't want too many spawning. Um, and following Frank BP, and two of those spawn. And then for wave three, just the same deal again, but with a different enemy. His name's Spillander, and we get two of them. So that's how you do the waves. It's easy, just like that. And if I wanted to have a new map, with a new combination of enemies, you just hit add, give it a unique name, and then fill it in just like that. So that's that's what's going on there. This is loading that from the data table, and then this wave information which is being saved is used later for spawning enemies. Um, I'm saving a seed, which I'll show you later. Um, setting up the spawn points, so these little colored things are where the enemies spawn. And they're just empty actors with a billboard, and the enemies just spawn at the billboard. So what happens here is when I set up the spawn points, I just get all of those spawn point actors, get their locations of the billboards. And that's the spawn point. Done. And then we begin the countdown. So we set a countdown, send everybody a message, and then we just count every second. Countdown until the countdown's done. Boom. Spawn the next wave. Uh, print the wave number onto the screen so each player knows what the wave is and then we spawn the enemies so the way that we spawn the enemies is we get the wave information which is all of this here right zero one two three four etc and we get the current wave number and then get that row of the array so if it's wave three we get the information for wave three and then basically what we do for each of the enemies inside of that wave um, we see how many of those we want to spawn, so the enemy number, and then we run a for loop which then spawns that class of actor however many times as defined by the enemy number. Words, man, there's a lot of words in this tutorial so far. Fucking hell. Um, and then what happens is each time an enemy is spawned, it's being added to this array right here. And this array um, is used after the enemies are spawned. What it does is I check the validity of each of the current current creatures, and um, if all of them are defeated, we continue to the next wave. If this returns false, we wait a second and then we just check again. Now, there's some wizard wizardry going on here with the spawn locations. So <laughs> this is a lot of tangled spaghetti, but we're making a transform. Okay, so that's connecting here. We have a random rotation being applied, so the enemies that spawn, they can spawn at any 360 degree angle. Um, and the location, if you just ignore all of this for now, basically all we're doing is just getting a random one of the spawn points. Simple as that. The spawn points are the ones that we saved in the beginning. But what you'll notice is this get random integer thing here and this get random float they're both connected to a stream so that each time you play the game um, the enemies spawn at the same spawn points and they spawn at the same rotation and the seed is set up back here at the start so this is event begin play get the wave information set the seed to 202 for now um, and then we go ahead and start the game now what I want to do Well, I don't know, I might just set that deliberately to whatever feels like a good seed, or I might give the player the ability to choose their own seed. That could be kind of cool. Um, and now this wizardry here, this is just basically saying, if this enemy class 
is contained in this array of snap to ground classes, which is the spinning cylinder guy with the eye and the lightning storms. He's the only one at the moment. If it's contained in there, then I just use a function which instead of spawning him up at the spawn point, which is the billboard, um, what we're going to do is I just run this other function which line traces to the ground and snaps him to the ground. And the reason that I have that is because this spinning cylinder guy doesn't have gravity applied to him, um, and the other characters do. So those wandering blocks that were walking around, because they've got gravity, they just spawn 500 units higher, drop to the ground, and then they start moving. But this spinning cylinder thing needs to be snapped to the ground, and there's going to be other things that need to be snapped to the ground too. So I thought I'd just have an array where I can keep a list of those, and then whenever they spawn, they're just going to be snapped to the ground using this wizardry just here. How do I check how long I've been talking? 10 minutes. That's a pretty good time. Um, I think that's all I wanted to show you. The wave information here uh, uses, it uses a structure in a structure, so that could be kind of interesting to show you. So the first structure is wave classes and wa uh, enemy classes and enemy numbers, and they're both of array types. And then I have another structure, which is wave info which is the first structure that I showed you, and then this structure, this uh, outer, outer structure, is the one that's used in the data table, just in case you wanted to know that, which I'm not sure that you would, but hey, now you know. So the plans now for this game, I think I'm done showing you everything. Um, have I showed you all the mechanics and stuff? I think I have. I have a crafting system, that's kind of cool, and an inventory. So um, you're gonna be able to pick up items and craft little things that can help you and your mates in the game. Um, but that's it. That's it. So, I don't know how long this is going to take. I don't even know if I'm going to finish it, because I obviously didn't finish the last game, and I'm sort of hit and miss with, um, games, you know? Sometimes they start good, and they go well, and other times I just can't be fucked, so... Uh, Bleep 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 was one of those ones that I just sort of couldn't be fucked with. It started to get a little bit boring, so I just quit, and, you know, I feel like it's a skill that I'm learning to develop, and an important skill just in general, I think, for anyone to know when to walk away from the shit that you're doing. <laughs> oh, man. Because sometimes it's just not the right thing to do, you know. So, I walked away from that last project and I'm starting a new one. And I think that's all I wanted to say. If you've got any comments, drop them below. If you've got any suggestions or things that you might like to see, let me know. Um... And I think that's all I wanted to say. I've got a store, which I'll link as well, where I've got some games and some assets and shit. I've got, you know, tutorials on my channel as well. This is sort of turning into a development log channel. If you've been following for a while, you would have probably started following for the tutorials, but um, if you've just been following the development logs, I just thought I'd tell you that this did start as a tutorial channel, so if you're interested in learning more about blueprints and how they work and whatever, um, have a look through the channel and drop me comments if you've got requests and things as well but that's it guys enjoy the rest of your day thanks for watching